Okay. Hello. I'm live. Hello, if you can see me. Good evening, if you can see me. Hello. Okay. Okay, good to see you, Shamsa Siuru. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join. And then I'm going to invite Dr. Bonking tonight. Thank you, Charles Beloa. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Charles Beloa, good to see you here. Okay, Juma Logic, good to see you. Tonight, we're going to just invite um, to interview Dr. Bon King. So I'm just waiting for a few more people to join and then we're going to bring him on. Okay. Dr. Bon King, good to see you. Welcome, Dr. Bon King. Good day, Good evening, sir. sir. How are you doing, sir? Very fine, very, very fine. How wow, 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 wow. So good to see you. So good to see you. I'm so honored to see you. Trust you're keeping safe. Yes, yeah, so I have to. <laughs> I'm a limited resource. Wow, wow. I can I can imagine. I can imagine. I can imagine. Thank you so much for honoring this tonight, Dr. King. Mm. Thank you. Um, a lot of people are still joining us. But because we have one hour, I think we should just um, go ahead. Uh, first of all, what I want to do is to try to uh, do some form of introduction so that um, um, a lot of people here will get to know you and then we'll kick off. But first of all, I want to thank you. I do not take what you have done tonight lightly at all. I do not take it for granted. Thank you so much for coming to share your experience live with us. Thank you. And it's always fun to have you around. I, I was on your video yesterday evening. And I learned so, so much, so, so much from you yesterday evening. Mm. So uh, we're glad to have Dr. Bon King here. Dr. Bon Thompson King is the president of the Bon King Foundation and the convener of the biggest youth empowerment conference in Africa, you know, the Thinkation. Proud to his foray into full-time youth development and mentorship, he has distinguished himself in the area of corporate performance, visionary leadership, global competitiveness, innovation, and social responsibility as the Chief Executive Officer of Protection Plus Securities Limited. Uh, is a highly respected and personable executive and business mentor who has established a reputation in the Nigerian security industry for solid performance and sound judgment. He has won a lot of awards. I'll just mention a few. Um, is a recipient of the 2016 African Child Prize for Integrity, Security, Intelligence. Uh, he won the Star Award in Maritime Security by Crime Reporters Association of Nigeria. I can tell you he's the biggest name 
in terms of maritime security in Nigeria. Maybe I should just give that expose, but I'll leave it at that. So, Dr. Bon King, we are glad to have you here. I, I want to really appreciate you for uh, the time you're going to spend with us tonight. And I believe a lot of people are going to take away a lot of value from tonight. Mm -hmm. um, like I explained to you, the reason why I'm putting this uh, Instagram live sessions, uh, the reason why I'm arranging it is this month, I'm clocking a 20-year milestone in my career. So I started my banking career 20 years ago, exactly this month. So I thought, let me try to do uh, this as a form of giveaway. I don't believe in giving away money of 5,000, 10,000, as good as that may sound. I think the best giveaway we can do is to give away knowledge and give away valuable information. And I thought, let me just talk to the people I know, my contacts, and see how we can have a discussion and perchance, maybe a few people will learn a few things from here. So thank you so much, Dr. King. We are happy to have you here. Now, let me start this way. Last night, while watching your video, you mentioned the fact that you went to three universities hmm. before you graduated. <coughs> and that was something I've never heard before. So what happened? Can you give us a background story? How did you overcome that challenge? Three universities before you graduated. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, um, this is actually going to be a very emotional part of my life. Growing up, my, my father was my friend. Um, my father used to be somebody that um, whenever he comes, there's always joy. My mom is business. If, if you see my mom, you know that somebody's going to get flogged. So nobody, we're not always excited when she was around. Mm. So my father used to be the one that when he comes to school, he will take us out. You know, you look forward to daddy's coming. So in my GSS, in uh, Federal Government College, Janiki Lagos, my father came to pick me in school and I was the last person to be picked up that day. Mm. So he couldn't, he wasn't allowed to drive into the, to the Federal Government College, Janiki, uh, to the hostel. And I was at the last block, Odudua. Wow. So I waited and I heard him around 6 p.m. in the night. He now came and then we walked hand in hand to the gate. That was the mm. last time I walked with my father. Wow. Now, my father was somebody that he was like a god to me. When we got back home and I knew he had gone, I came back to school. So I could not, I had this fear that, look, I lost my father and everything in my life had gone. So things that used to make people excited wasn't exciting me anymore. I did not know that it had affected a part of my mindset where it had to do with academics. So I started flunking in English-related subjects. So, but in maths, I was okay. So when I was leaving secondary school, I had a P in English. So in, I got into University of Benin in 1989 to study chemical engineering. Mm. So I couldn't enter. I had started classes, but they said that I must have a credit, mm. that what I had was a P, so they would not allow me to continue. So mm. I had to drop out of school and wow. then go back and write GC. Because at the, that time, you can start school and write GC. Then when the results come, you can now tender it. But unfortunately, they said no, that I couldn't tender it. So I left mm. Uniben. 1990, I went to last. The same thing wow. happened in Lasso. I had to leave. 1991, I got admitted into University of Calabar to study agri-economics. Now, when I got into agri-economics, the same thing again happened. But this time, it took longer, and I was just about to start writing exams when they now wow. screened me out. And they told me that it's either I go to education agri or I go and write GC again. And I told them, look, <laughs> I will do education agri. So I moved into education agri and did mm -hmm. education agri. Now, so my mom got to hear that I was going to do education agri. And in her mind, she now believed that I was going to become a teacher. And mm -hmm. this because I was going to become a teacher. She didn't like it because my father had a second wife. So there was this competition. So I was more or less mm -hmm. going to be a disgrace to her. When wow. her stepson was doing something better, me, I was going to do something like uh, agri um, education to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I was disowned in my year one at the age of 19. That affected me severely. 
affected wow. me severely. So I had to start squatting in somebody's fashion house in Onikewaya. I was stay there for three months, and on the fourth month, I now go to school. So I missed my ten papers, missed my projects, missed all wow. those things. So I came out of the University of Calabar with a third class, extra third year. Class. Wow. Third class, extra year, and my name was not on the NYC list. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So, so I just I, I I just didn't um, I just I just didn't care. Paul, I see you. I just didn't bother. I just so I, by this time I had a passion for security because somebody killed my father. So my plan was when I grow up I'll learn to use a gun to go and kill the person. Unfortunately, by the time I grew up the man had died. So that passion oh. for security was what I held, and I started. Wow. So I started serving as a security officer in a church in New York Rival State. I worked in that church for three years without salary. So whatever wow. anybody gives me, hand me down. That's what I take. Once I have 30, 30 naira, all I'll go to where people are selling food for construction workers. And I'll tell the woman three fingers. That means two wraps of gari, extra one, without meat. I wow. wasn't a fan of meat because meat was a waste of resources. I will always eat. If I wanted meat, I would look for a ripe purple. It will serve as vegetable, wow. serve as fruit. It will serve as meat. After all, it is my eating, not your eating. Wow. So three years you work without salary. Yes. So what, what, what's responsible for that amazing transformation? Everywhere you go now, it's Dr. Mark King. I've seen a lot of your videos. I see the vacation you do. I, I sent you a message a few days ago about that interview you did with Dr. Allen Oyeman. I mean, fantastic, amazing. What do you think is responsible for that rapid transformation? And what can the people who are watching us tonight, what can they benefit? How can they, how can they be motivated to know that wherever they are now, it's not the end of the game? You know, one of the things I tell people, eh, if ever you know people that take palm oil, eh, when the palm kernel is given to you, eh, you first have to pluck the bunch down. It has spiky things. You remove the seed out. That's not the palm oil. It's the palm kernel. You will now have to you know, break the shaft and you squeeze the shaft inside something. So life will squeeze the life out of you. Then when they mm. squeeze it, they will now squeeze the juice out of you. It is when you have squeezed out everything of you, that part that comes out is what gives value. Now, in wow. the story, there's a Bible portion that says that, you know, um, pure gold needs to go through the fire. The mm -hmm. value of gold comes after you have gone through the fire. Through the fire. Mm -hmm. If you are going to come out as somebody that will be valuable, there are certain things you have to go through. So when I come out to teach people or to talk to people, you can't give me an excuse because I've gone there. If you tell me you don't have money, neither did I. If you tell me your father did not, I did not see my father. If you tell me your mom did not sponsor you to school, my mom so quick, my mom so full, full not to consign me. If you tell me you didn't have a house, me, I slept in somebody's fashion house for three months. I went to school. If you tell wow. me that you didn't have a house, I squatted in people's houses. I stayed there. When I got married, I was squatting in somebody's house for one year. My first daughter was born in somebody's house. When I needed wow. to pay for my own place, I went to Alak Badu. I didn't go to Lekki. Alak Badu house was 72,000 naira. My in Lekki was 300 and something. I followed where my money could reach. I didn't mm. have uh, cotton in my house. What I had there was newspaper to come to. It is my house. I start with whatever I have, but I aspire high. And I keep going mm. like that. So you don't need anybody to, you know, make you look as if you have to kill the whole world to have. No, 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 no. Mm. Just be yourself, aspire, look for good mentors, and then follow that pattern. Once you follow, you'll be growing into the next phase. If you now decide to go and choose something that is above you, you will go down. You will not come up. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Dr. King. Okay, let, let's talk about business. You are a notable business leader. I've listened to you so many times, talked to a lot of business leaders, about budget scenes, in fact, so many different um, topics. Now, many businesses are going through a rough patch because of COVID-19. This pandemic has, you know, started something that um, there, there are factories that are shut down, production lines caught, a lot of people are losing jobs, there's a lot of fear all over the world. So as a business leader, how do you think that businesses can reposition post-COVID-19? Uh, I think um, there are there are certain there are certain words that need to become 
constant in the in the mind of people now. And the first and most important word is artificial intelligence. Now we need to do what they call predictive buying. It's not everybody that is complaining that the situation is bad. Mm. The people that are trying, that are giving us data now, MTN, Airtel, V Mobile, and Co, whatever they call themselves, they are not complaining. Mm. They are not complaining at all. In short, they are making more money. The company called Netflix is doing transmission of 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 of, of, of um, movies, movies, and they are even more expert. They are, they are, they are, they are, more, they are richer than Exxon Mobil now. Mm. One of the things I think we should do is to find out where is the market going to? How are people, you know, positioning themselves? Whether we like it or not, people have been saying that data is the new oil. Mm -hmm. So you should begin to understand that any business that you are doing, you must cover what God has said. Dominate the air, dominate the land, dominate the sea. The, the sea. part you mm -hmm. ignore will ignore you. Mm. People that did not put their platform in the air, they are suffering now. Mm. Because now the land is not going anywhere. And then mm. sea is restricted. But those that have business like the Facebook, the, um, the, 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 those that are doing internet and co, they are the ones cleaning out now. TV, wow. they are cleaning out now. So whatever you can do that has to do with air, start tying all your business to air, land and sea. People that are doing food, agriculture, they have an opportunity now. So you now need to plan, okay, what do people need? Predict what will happen. Now I'll give you a classic example. Because people are at home now, I dare say that the number of children that will be born in nine months' time will become alarming. Are you preparing to take care of them? The food they will eat, wow. the kind of things that they will put. So people need to start looking at them. Whether we like it or not, those basic things must be catered for. While doing all that now, you need to understand what is the mode of transportation? What is the mode of logistics? Right now, people that are like Jumia and Conga, you will do logistic drop-off for all. So drop shipping is going to increase. You know, yeah. people will find out that I don't need to go to work to work so I can mm -hmm. be there. So people need to start thinking, okay, what do I need? Where, what do I need to do? You now begin to go online and learn courses that will be relevant for the future. Ask yourself what will be relevant for the future. Where do you go to? You must begin to learn about machine learning. You must begin yeah. to learn how do you apply um, um, data capturing? How do you um, align um, in, uh, artificial intelligence into your business? Before now, if I want to come to your house, wherever your house is, I will collect address. I'll travel to Ongo State or your state or whichever mm -hmm. state and stay. But now, and it will take me like three to four or five hours. But what I need to do is just put your address now on Google Map, Google Map Street, and there it will tell me the exact hour. They say, so people should start thinking like Google Map. What mm. can I add to my system to give me the result I need? And then begin to get <coughs> develop soft skills now. If you don't talk to people, learn to talk more to people. Learn mm. to greet somebody. Learn to appreciate people the more. Because the more you can connect with people, the more money can come to you. Attention follows attention. Money follows attention. And if you don't get the people, money will not follow you anywhere. Money so follows fans, attention. Wow. Money follows attention. So when you see me now, during this time that we're doing uh, that post-COVID, I am I, I'm on live every single day. Every single day. I am in your face. I am in your email. I'm in your WhatsApp. I'm in everywhere. So you see me. Bible says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy sight. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. Day and from night. Thy, mm. To do all that is written there. Wherein thou shalt have. So there is a law that I'm applying because if I follow it, I shall have. Mm. So mm. I'm preparing for the harvest. When your money wow. comes, you'll pay me for it. That's the law. Wow. Wow. So I need fantastic. to invest it now. Mm. Money follows attention. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Okay, let, let, let's be sector specific now. Where, which sectors do you see opportunities arising after this pandemic? I'm, I'm glad you've spoken about data, We've spoken about artificial intelligence, but narrowing it down to Nigeria, our sector, which areas do you see as emerging sectors where people can begin to, you know, concentrate their attention and begin to possibly learn some skills? Um, I think, first of all, I don't want to be like, a, because whatever I say here, people will want to quote me. 
the first okay. and most important information that you need is how many people are in Nigeria? We have over 201 million people. Mm. Very good. If yeah. you know that information, where are these people? Mm. The, um, the um, Lake Chad Basin that serves five countries has mm. depleted by 90%. So there's migration down. Because there's migration down, you should begin to ask yourself, what is the population of people in different places? What mm -hmm. do they need there? And yeah. how can you serve them? How do you get to them? What is the level of internet or data penetration to these people? What mm -hmm. do they need? What can you service? Because there are people that want to eat. There are people that want film. There are people that want... Now you have online learning. People did not know anything about online learning, but it has come to stay. Because True. as that started, it has come to stay because people are going through education. So if I now say that online schooling is going to be a new thing now, you will see a lot of people now who may be listening to me say, I'm going to register this thing. But you see, you must understand how does it work? How the, what is the best approach to it? Now you may say, okay, food deliveries. Because before now, someone is going to a restaurant. You don't need to go anymore. You can just order and then they'll come and deliver. So that is another catchment. People are saying, okay, I don't need to go home now. People that are in the um, internet providers will now do fiber optic lane that that will be able to serve. So people can buy data from a company and say, okay, I'll service this, um, this um, department and, and work like that. So follow the numbers. Where the numbers go to, that's where the money is. Follow, follow the number. Yes. Hmm. Where the, the numbers go to, that's where the money is. Wow. Yes. Where the numbers go to, that's where the money is. Wow. Fantastic. Okay, let, let, let's just go back a little bit. Um, earlier this year, um, I remember that we invited you for a retreat, amazing session that we had. You know, I, I was writing at the retreat and I had my pages, you know, filled up with a lot of things you said. And one of the things that kept on ringing in my mind was when you said that a king is not looking for hard skills that a king is looking for soft skills. Now, I have a lot of my colleagues, you know, a lot of people who work in paid employment, employees who are watching us live. And a lot of people are thinking, what can I do in the light of this pandemic? How do I reposition myself, you know? And then that word kept on ringing to me. A king is not looking for hard skills. A king is looking for soft skills. So what advice or suggestions do you have for employees post-COVID-19? Okay, I think first of all, I will tell you what a king is. A king is a very lonely place. Rulership, kingship is very lonely. A king will do anything to have quality relationships. You are not, if Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. Yeah? It also says entreat the favor of a king. So if you want the power of a king to come, entreat it. How do you entreat that favor? He says, show me a man who is diligent. He shall stand before kings. Now, diligence will bring you to the palace, but it mm. is character that will keep mm. you there. Wow. There are a lot of people that are skillful, and they are skillful in their jobs, but they mm. lack character. How do you go to a king's house and then you are not dressing well? Mm. How do you go to a king's house and you are smelling of body odor? Because mm. a king will first look at you before he talks to you. Mm. When, you when he sees that you are dressing well, he will tell you, come near, let me sit, sit by me. If your perfume mm. is on point, he will shake you. You have, mm. We have refreshed him. But if he knows that you have the capacity and you can mm. do And meanwhile, they are looking one kind. It will delegate you under somebody. Mm. So if you want to develop your soft skill, begin to target that this is the king you are looking for. What mm. are the things he likes? He likes you to dress. Dress well. Cut your hair. Don't come in because you're a millennial. You don't want to work with slippers. No, no, no. Be careful about the things that are interesting to the man. If the man likes protocol, don't sit before he sits down. If the wow. man says, okay, come and eat, you are the one that will say, okay, when he gives you the food, don't be the first to pour salt into your food when you have not tasted it. Because when you do that, 
you begin to tell the man certain things that you do not you do not review cases before you take a decision. Just wow. salt. Because once you put that salt and you have not tasted the food, he knows that you do not think, you do not process things before you take a decision. Mm. Yes. Mm. So everything you do, if you wear a tie that is maybe, um, if you know your, 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 your king is somebody that likes bold colors, don't go to him with stripe. Mm. You irritate him. If you're somebody that likes stripe, don't go there with bold. So you need to be very careful. Study your king. Know wow. what he likes. When Joseph was going to meet the king, the Bible said something. He shaved his beard and he changed his caftan. Mm. He made sure that he looked the part before going to see that king. Mm. If I'm going to see any particular king, I find out what is critical for the person. Mm. Deportment is always before comportment. Deportment wow. means how you look. Your mm. image. There are people that will just look at you and they say, come into my office. If you have a mobile policeman and a regular policeman, even if the regular policeman is more educated, you will call the mobile man. You believe he's more sophisticated because of his khaki that has starch. Because a rich man or a successful man or a king feeds his eyes, his eyes. He takes his decision with his eyes, his ears. So he's not interested in your grammar. He's interested in what he sees. Do you fit the exactly. profile? Do you... Wow. Do do you, are you somebody that listens? Uh, do you smell like him? Uh, mm. Are you able to sit in the same car with him and have a very nice comfort, um, 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 discussion? How do you laugh when a joke is, is crying? No, <laughs> no uh, you know, you are careful. Everything is calculated in the presence yeah. of a king. Everything you wow. do, everything you do, even the color of your belt and your shoe matters. Wow. So deportment comes before comportment. Yes, deportment wow, is eighty percent. Comportment wow. is twenty percent. But that comportment, eh, Pareto's principle says twenty percent of your investment gives you eighty percent of the of your result. So don't joke with your comportment. Mm. He sees eighty mm. percent first. Wow. Eighty percent is what he sees first, and that mm. is your deportment. The mm. way you put your biro on the table. The way your shirt is, the way you hang, those things are what excites him. Mm. Once he sees that, he can now bring you. So once he brings you, he's looking for more time with you. So your 20%, you are able to generate 80% of the result. My brother, you'll be in his, in his office every day. Every day. Yeah. You'll be discussing mm. national issues, global mm. issues. Mm. Because he knows the button, you know the button that tickles him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I wish more people would get to know about this because I see a lot of millennials who just think deportment does not matter, comportment does not matter, just because maybe I have some stuff here. But I'm glad to know now that what the king, the king sees first before he makes any decision. And that's very important to him. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Now, during that last retreat that we had, there was an issue you raised that for me, I had to do a lot of introspection about it for a long time. <laughs> I had to meditate on it. And that was the issue of ethical bribes. Yes. You mentioned ethical bribes. I, I yes. remember I wrote it in capital and I underlined it in my book. Yes. And I remember that time you spoke about that the fact that businesses have to give hooks for them yes. to be able to draw customers in. I, I want you to speak a little bit about ethical bribes Especially because, you know, a lot of businesses now have to devise new methods of attracting customers because the disposable income of customers have shrunk. Customers already have, they are acquiring some new taste, especially because while we were on lockdown in Lagos for about five weeks, everything that was important to us was just food, you know, and um, shelter and all that. Nobody was buying wig, nobody was buying clothes and all that. So I'd like you to talk about ethical bribes. Okay, ethical bribe in the in the penetrating the stranger, that is law number three. Yeah? And um, mm. remember, I use the word ethical, ethical bribes. Let mm. me use a classic example, and everybody that is listening to me. If you go to a suya man, a mesuya, the first thing a mesuya will do, he will cut a piece of the suya and then give it to you. When the man gives you that suya, will you go away? There's no way you'll go. No. 
He has hooked you. Mm. It's called the law mm. of the hook. Ethical bribe means to give mm. the person something he is looking for in a way mm. to get something you need. Now, it is not the one that you say, okay, give me 10,000 naira, give me this. Now, the two of us are displaying, are talking, this is an ethical bribe. Mm. We are passing knowledge that will help. Mm. It's going to help the person. So the person now becomes our, our family. They come back to us because we have given them something they need. So mm. when an ethical bribe is that you make it available for them, and then they take it, and then they come back to you. So if you have like this, now, okay, like, and let's come back, baby, okay, I want to come and do a free training for you. Mm -hmm. And then once you see the value of the training, give me your phone numbers, your emails, so that I can send it to you. Now you have collected their list, and then you can send it to them. So that is what they call an ethical bribe. You know that they need this for their progress, and then you give it to them, for something you need, maybe their email, their phone numbers, and co. When I was doing a program called Tinkation, I told yeah. everybody for free. It was for free. And I had over 20,000 people that came. Now, people wow. did not know that it cost me quite a large sum of money putting that event. I did not put the event because I wanted to make profit. I put mm. the event because I wanted that list. That list is my asset. So mm. every day I can commune with them. Every day I can relate with them. I can turn them from cold customers to warm customers, then to hot customers. So from there, if I tell them jump, they will say, how high do I want oh. to jump? Yes, because I have been able to combat them. But if I come every day and I don't have that list, And they begin to come back from being cold to warm, then to hot. Once they are hot, once you mention my name, ah, they are happy because I've combated them. Mike, how are you doing? I see you from the U.S. How are you doing? So those are the kind of things that you do. It's called ethical mm. bribe. And I'll tell you one thing that Mike did. Mike said we're going to have a 10x party somewhere in the U.S. So when I heard 10x party, and I said, okay, we'll go there. So me and him and his wife, we were in the room, we were doing a funnel. And because he invited me there, I said, okay, what I'll do is that I will make him speak on my event and then pitch to my people. And he did, you know. So he gave them free, uh, thing, and some of them signed up for his course. He gave you free book, but some signed for his course. So those are ethical bribes. And you must know as a businessman, I'll tell you a practical mm -hmm. example. When I was doing something for the oil and gas, and I knew that they'd go to airport run, I know that there's a risk traveling late. So I tell them I'll provide you escort at no cost. Now, when mm -hmm. you take the escort once, <laughs> you, tell, you touch your man, uh, you are coming back for it. <laughs> because I know that in that escort you will talk to me about your plan so I sit with you I have given you an ethical bribe but you have told me what you are going to do next and I queue into that place that's what they call an ethical bribe you must be in the presence of the decision maker that is the person that takes the decision so make sure you find your way to that person and be forthright the beautiful thing about it is that kings like things for free that's how you break them wow wow yes. Wow, that's how you break kings. Wow, yeah, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I remember I, one statement you I, made. I have, I have a boy eh, who okay. makes captains for me. The guy just came one day and said, look, I love your build. Can I make a captain for you? Mm. And I don't do for junior people. I do for... So when he did the captain, the captain was beautiful. I did 10. I wow. paid him for 10. Wow. He did one for free. It was beautiful. He knew, he knows his product is good. So he mm. gave it to me to taste. When I tasted, I did 10. I told two of my friends, they did 10. All of us, every six months or so, we do like 10, 10 from him. And then we dash it out. So what was his investment? One, ethical bribe. One. One. Ethical bribe. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So wow. some of you that can make cake, target your people. If they are doing birthdays, you know, and if your friends are doing birthdays or their children, target and go and do a delivery cake and say, ah, madam, I just want to give you this cake. You know, mm -hmm. once they taste it and it's sweet, my brother, you supply the next cake for themselves. They are, they are hooked. Yes, they are hooked. They are... you must <laughs> learn to hook them. Why do they put a bait on a hook? So that there's mm -hmm. something that you leak first. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's called so the you law must of the hook. To hook them. Yes, <laughs> hook them. The law of the hook. Wow, wow.
Okay, L let's take this last one before we take questions because our time um, is going. Um, I know one of the things I love to hear you talk about is the business triangle, talking about customers, talking about products, talking about opportunity. And I think this is a very good time for a lot of business people who are listening to us to get to know about the interplay of that business triangle. Hey, Bayo, Bayo, this is Master Class. <laughs> This My boss. Master <laughs> yeah, Okay. First of all, I cannot say no. Um, there's something called a business triangle. Mm. Business triangle has three elements that are there. Mm. You have the customers, you have the products, and you have the opportunity. You can have customers, you have product, but if there is no opportunity, you don't have a business. Mm. You can have customers. You can have the opportunity. But if you don't have product, you don't have a business. Mm. You can have the opportunity. You have the product. But once you don't have customer, you don't have a, a business. So if you want to win in life, you must have the product, you must have the customers, and you must have the opportunity. Okay. These three must be there to form the triangle. Without mm. it, it's not possible. Where mm. the customer and the product meet is called the mm. market. Mm. Where the customer and the product meet is called the market. Mm. So if you are looking for what to put, find out what is attractive to that person and put it. Now, wow. where the opportunity meets with the cost, where the opportunity meets with the product is where you call your traffic. Mm. When you are able to push the product, you know, to, to people to see what you're this thing. You come on Insta Live, you come on this. So that place is where they call the traffic. Now, wow. where you have the opportunity and you have the customer is the mm. is, is also the time. You must also target the time that, that must happen because there are people that take decisions at different times. If you go to wow. Dubai Mall, you will never see any advert. What they do is that they play certain music to stimulate you. And they have certain smells to stimulate you. So they mm. catch you there. They know where people don't go to. So when people don't go to, they, they now put the music there and they attract you. They mm. use the do dancing fountain to get you to Dubai Mall so you can wow. go around. Mm. 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 Wow. Wow. The business triangle, customer, the product, but and then the opportunity. Wow, fantastic. Wow, thank you so much. Um, I think we should just allow a few questions. Um, ah, Dr. Bonking has already blown us away today, uh, and it's been an amazing session with him. So please, if you have your questions, please just type it, and then I'm sure we'll be able to take a few questions before this live Instagram section is over. Okay? Um, if anybody has any questions, please just type it out, and Dr. Bonking will be able to answer those questions. Now, you just started an online radio station. You told me. Yes. An online radio station. And one of the things that amazed me was when you said, all what you want on that radio station, good news. That the world is full of bad news. And my layman thinking is, it is bad news that sell fast. But you're coming from the other angle to say, on your own online radio station, it's just good news you want. So how does that play out? It's called the law of displacement. The law Failure of displacement. is traceable to the news you hear. Success mm. is traceable to the news you hear. Mm. Successful mm. people look for the news they need. They don't look for mm. every news. Mm. The, the people that push out negative news, they know that if they feed you with negative news, they can sell products to you. Mm. Now, the only way to get out negative news is simple, is to, you know, put positive news to displace negative news. Mm. That's how it, that's how it, that's how, how I do it. Now, if I ask you this song now, you know, you, you're a pastor. Me, I'm not a pastor. If <laughs> the house here, we know. Eh? Number one is, when the bed do, they enter body. Who knows that song? Enter body. When the bed do they, who knows that song? If you know that song, type it down, type it down, type it. Now, if, if, I never heard that song before. Don't worry. <laughs> then the second song is 
Shaka, 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 shaka. If you know that song, type it down. Type it. Now, you see, you will see that people will begin to give you answers to those two songs. People mm -hmm. will give you answers to those two songs. And when they give you the answers, it is not because they know they, 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 they <laughs> so what happens is that that first song is by Bonner Boy. The second okay. song is by um, Whiskey. Now, okay. see, they're attacking it, which is good. How yes. many of them know that they have a hundred million in their account? They don't know mm. because mm. when they wake up in the morning or sleep at night, they hear the song on radio. What happens is that the song finds its way, mm. you know, into their head. So mm. in the middle of the night, when the song is playing, they, they can open the file of their head and remove mm. shocker, shocker, that is whiskey. Eh? If it is Bonner Boy, they remove the file. But when it comes to success, they don't know because there's no file in their head. Mm. Mm. So what my, my plan is to now start putting positive things into their head through the radio station. So wow. if you want to hear things that are positive, focus on positive news. Wow. Every day. Because if you go to a hospital and you're sick of malaria, they will give you drugs. Take four in the morning, two in the night, two in the morning, two in the night, two in the morning, two in the night. Now, my question is, why didn't they take everything at the same time? Because mm. it doesn't work. Because by the time you take the first one, it will reduce. Then you will not take again in the night. They take it okay. the next morning. So success is also like pills. You take some food in the morning. Some mm. success food in the morning. Success food in the night. Success food in the morning. Because the one in the morning will be wearing out. Yeah. So you need to push it again. Like you take yeah. drugs to attack the malaria. Then you yeah. take it again in the morning to attack. The more you take like that, it begins to replace the sickness of poverty, mentality, wow. mundanity, in your brain. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. What's the name of the online radio station for a lot of people who are listening to us? Africa Motivate 247. Africa Motivate 247. No, so you just go it. online and then... If you just go it. to Africa Motivate. AfricanMotivate247.com Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. That, that, that's really awesome. Now, someone asked the question, maybe we can take that before we go off. How do you grow retail sales? I guess the person is in retail sales. How do you grow your sales? Maybe just um, one minute. Um, Ogabayo, one of the things yeah. I tell people, do not delegate upwards. Mm. Um, the kind of mm. thinking I do is not retail sales now. Mm. That mm. person, that person should go and find out. You should go and ask Amazon, ask um, Tesco, ask all those ones. Look for yeah. people that are doing what you are doing and mm -hmm. then do that one. Yes, yeah. and then study them. That's yeah. why the Bible says study to show yourself. If you're mm. asking me about retail sales, that's not what I'm thinking. Mm. I, I think yeah. Yeah. I'm not being sarcastic, but I'm just helping you. Don't delete Very true. Mm. Very true. Very true. Any other person has any other question here? I've not seen any other one here. Mm. Questions, and then we've had an amazing, an amazing session with Dr. Ubon King. Anytime that I either watch him or listen to him, he blows me away. And <laughs> I, I, I tell you, we've been blessed tonight. We've been blessed this evening. It's been an amazing session with you. I want to really thank you. Um, for viewers who are looking at us, he had, I just told you about this on Sunday. I just told you about this on Sunday. And yes. I, I really thank you for, you know, for this privilege and this access that you have given to someone like me. You know, thank you so, so much. Um, I just got to know you one-on-one -on -one this year. And it's as if I've known you forever. You know, we chat and all that. There are two questions that have popped here. Let me quickly deal with them. Okay. Be okay. Best tips to stay healthy. Do, uh, while working hard, you know, I think first of all is always to have good music, you know, and um, the music you like, especially music that are calm and soothing. Number two is drink a lot of water as much as possible. 
when you get tired, please go and rest. Don't walk yourself to, to sleep because you can get into overthinking and then headache and then you lose everything that you do. You know, make sure you have good friends you can always talk to and get some laughter out of your body, which is critical. So those are my own tips about that. Um, number two is uh, what kind of books am I currently reading? Man, the book I'm reading is called 50, 50 Years, 50, 50 by Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. It speaks about the man who is the president, vice president of UAE in 50 years in service. Because I always tell people, whenever you see the glory on anybody, um, mm -hmm. ask for the story. So inside the story of every man is always the secret. So I read it to know the secret. How do I get the Tinkation and PYM video? You can come to my DM. I'll answer that and I'll do that. In this content world, how do you position for opportunities, especially during this content? I think the, there are five major words that I'll give to you. First of all is awareness. Keep pushing your content out there. You know, the um, um, attention, money follows attention. Keep pushing it outside there. As you push it, at, at, um, awareness is first, then acceptance. When your content is out there under awareness, people begin to accept you and begin to believe in you. From there, you go to marketing. Marketing says what your values are. That, we, uh, that your value is one million naira. That means they have not paid nobody. They know how much your value is. Then from there, it goes to sale. They will now say, okay, let's negotiate. They pay you or they don't pay you. When they pay you, after that, it goes to referral. So awareness, um, acceptance, marketing, sales, then um, referrals. That's what referral. I ask. What three things wow. do you do in the morning and in the night? First of all, between 5, uh, 5.30 to 7 or 8, is family time. I concentrate with my family and I spend some time reading. That's family time because I'm all born with my family and um, I definitely spend some time reading. I spend some time playing with my children because if I start getting into work, I lose my children in future. And I also make sure that I keep my wife updated with everything. The same thing I do at night. My son is in the car with me. Every time I teach, he's always here to learn. Every time ah, I teach, he's always here to learn so that um, he, he, he gets positioned. I have met a lot of high-profile people, but I'm bad at keeping a great relationship. Go to my YouTube channel, watch Penetrating Your Market. It's free. It's a two-hour video. It will answer your question. I'm already listening to Africa Motivate. Now there's a, on my browser. Good day. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Sir, thank you very much. I've tried. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong King. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. I do not take this lightly at all. I do not take this for granted. We want to appreciate you. On behalf of everybody who has watched this, who has um, benefited one thing or the other this evening, I want to really thank you and sincerely appreciate you. Tomorrow, I'm bringing Mr. Kola Lubodi right here. Mr. Kola Lubodi is the leading African expert on background checks. As the CEO of Background Check International, You've got to listen to his story. He's going to talk about how you can get opportunity from adversity, from the adversity to opportunity. He's a man who, you know, had polio, but he was able to take himself up, has done amazing things. You've got to listen to his story. His story will blow you away, just like Dr. Bonking has blown us away tonight. I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bonking. I'm so grateful. Thank you for joining us. The Lord bless you. So thank until tomorrow, everyone, thank you so much. 6 p.m., Tomorrow, we're live here with Mr. Kola Olubode. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.